Thank you. So I'm Sarah, and I'm here to talk about Cadith and talk about health technology assessment. And just to begin, I wanted to um, talk about where Cadith is, receives our funding from, and also to acknowledge my own privilege um, of being white, of having English as my mother tongue, um, having uh, had opportunities for education, and also that I'm in good health right now. So to talk a little bit about CADETH, CADETH is a HTA, Health Technology Assessment Body. And a health technology isn't necessarily a phone app or a computer. A, H, um, a health technology could be a drug, um, a medicine. It could be a device, um, such as a stent or a heart monitor. It could actually be a procedure. Um, such as surgery or sterilization technique. Um, so what CADETH does is we assess technologies. And we usually do that assessment to inform a policy decision. Um, and often that could be a funding decision. And here this is kind of my slide of where CADETH fits in. And we're in that middle part. So um, Health Canada might look at, well, does this drug work? Does this device work? And we look at it in terms of the comparisons. Out of all the different uh, treatments that are available to solve that uh, condition, to solve that, to work, uh, manage that disease, how does this new treatment compare? Um, does it treat a different population? Does it work in a different way? And cost is part of that comparison. If we look at how patients and patient groups and uh, citizens and communities can be involved in CADETH, um, one of the things that we have uh, done just at the beginning of this year, having had many years of engagement, um, is that we put on our website um, a framework for how we engage. And uh, that framework talks about um, the hows and the whys. But we also have a great document there in terms of all the different opportunities for involvement. So if we look on the far left, we have a sense of all the different opportunities that um, patients or any member of the public can read the different assessments that we do. And CADETH does about 100 drug assessments um, and about 300 or so quick responses uh, to look at what is the evidence about a technology. That's available for anybody to be able to read, to share with their doctor, share with their family, share more widely. We have regular stakeholder consultations, um, and anybody who is, is able to contribute their ideas and insights, whether that's on a process change or a draft scientific report. We have opportunities for involvement, and, and I'd say our CADETH Symposium, our annual conference, is probably the best example of that involvement. So we have patients every year on our planning committee. We have patients who submit abstracts, so they're contributing to the scientific program. They are speaking in panels. They are presenting in uh, posters. They're also involved in the review of all the different abstracts that come in so that the scientific program is relevant to patient communities. Um, and to be able to facilitate that, to facilitate patients being a good, healthy um, proportion of the audience, CADETH provides travel grants so that people can go as the conference moves from city to city. In terms of collaboration, where you're thinking of a patient partner being kind of working with the research team, working at multiple steps of the engagement along a, a longer project. We have a few examples of that. Um, probably our best examples are in the scientific advice process where uh, CADF gives advice on trial design to pharmaceutical companies. And then if you take over to the far right of the, the spectrum in terms of empowering our best and probably only true example of that is where we have patient or public members on our expert committees. And they're fully engaged as members of that expert committees. They receive training, they receive honorarium, they have voting rights, they are there at that decision making table. Patient input is probably um, the best known example of engagement of, at CADETH. Now when I talk about that, that is patient groups, uh, providing perspectives to our single drug reviews at CADETH. 
And this slide kind of outlines the different ways in which that input is used by Cadeth. And I just wanted to highlight that probably the most influential, the most important way that that is used is that O in PICO. Now that PICO is kind of the, is the protocol and it stands for the population, intervention, comparators, and the outcomes. So it's those outcomes. What are the outcomes that matter the most to patients? So if the patient groups tell us, well, what actually matters most for this um, d disease, this, this um, condition that the drug is trying to address, if that's, say, fatigue or fewer exacerbations or more months of life to be able to spend at home with family, or um, maintaining quality of life in a, 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 a um, progressively worsening disease. And those outcomes are measured in the clinical trial, they're reported in the clinical trial, and ideally there's improvement shown in the, in the trial. Then Cadeth has with certainty that not only does the drug work, but it works in a way that is meaningful to the person who is going to be receiving that drug. And it was really interesting to hear Eric uh, comment about, um, you know, data's useful, but it's really that, that context that, that matters. So patient's um, input is often used to be able to understand, well, what is the impact of uh, that alignment or lack of alignment with what outcomes are important with what was in the clinical trial. What is the impact of being able to maintain independence? Um, what is the impact of being able to have, uh, being able to have the confidence to leave your house because pr symptoms are more predictable or uh, things have changed? Um, conversely, what is the impact of having to travel uh, to, say travel for half a day, three times a week to receive treatment and to be able to understand well, what impact that will be if that um, way that the drug is taken uh, changes. And in that input, what also is incredibly important is, well, how does that impact change whether this person is, you know, an adult at work or a senior or a youth or somebody who lives in a rural community? And try to be able to understand those details is also incredibly important. So which brings me to um, another initiative that uh, CAD is very proud of um, this year, is been learning to understand better the perspectives of those users of the healthcare system. So it was probably this, uh, about this time last year that I was speaking with um, a number of different people here in, in this room, as well as um, other patient groups that Cadeth regularly interacts with, as well as different uh, directorates at Cadeth, as well as our expert committees, to be able to identify, well, who aren't we hearing from? What do we need um, a, a new committee to do to be able to have richer engagement, different engagement? And through all those conversations, we developed the term terms of reference um, we, and we had a recruitment and we had widespread recruitment to be able to create our uh, advisory committee. That advisory committee has now met twice and we are going to be working with the advisory committee on kind of four broad areas. One, understanding who we're hearing from and who we're not. Um, being able to understand, well, what are some different ways of engagement, uh, deeper ways of engagement, uh, alternatives? Um, how do we better communicate what Cadeth is, why we matter, the, the impact of our assessments um, to, the, to, to those who are impacted by those assessments? And also looking at um, opportunities for engagement across technology's kind of life cycle. So I just want to highlight too that um, while we're working with this committee and they will be very um, valuable in helping Cadeth better understand uh, perspectives from the healthcare users' perspectives, um, that this committee is not going to take away from any of the other opportunities that I highlighted for engagement. Um, this committee is not going to be giving patient input. It is not going to be sitting on the expert panel. It is something in addition. So it's helping us 
further expand how we engage patients. So thank you very much. So good morning, everyone. I'm really glad to be here today to talk to you about where Ines is coming from, where it's at now, and where we are going in the near future. But first of all, let's talk about who is Ines. The National Institute of Health and, and Social Services is the health technology assessment body in Quebec. So as mentioned Louise earlier, the rest of Canada has CADET and the Quebec has us. The Institute was created in 2011 following the merge of two bodies at first. It was the Conseil du Médicament for Drugs and the Agence d'Evaluation des Technologies et des Modes d'Intervention en Santé for Technologies. A little later, the social services joined. And now, all under the same roof as three distinct directorate, we are sharing the same mission, the same vision, the same values, as well as the same mandate. So in my opinion, there are three key words in our mandate, Eva evaluation, recommendation, as well as uh, development. In our directorate, the one related to drug and more specifically into the branch dedicated to drugs for, for uh, listing purposes, we are evaluating the clinical advantages and the costs related to medication, obviously, in order to issue a recommendation to the Minister of Health and Social Services. This whole evaluation is based on five criteria that can be found in our act. Um, it is worth mentioning that the, the, that the therapeutic value is the first criteria, and it is in this section that the patient perspective has its most valuable insight, in my opinion. So we are evaluating through five criteria. We are issuing a recommendation to the Minister of, of Health and Social Services, and then she decides whether the drug should be listed or not on the list of medication. So here comes the core of the presentation. Let's start with where we are coming from. Until a couple of months ago, we were working in batches. This means that the manufacturer only had three windows in a given year to make their submission. In addition, it was almost exclusively after the issuance of the Notice of Compliance by Health Canada, which is the, the market authorization. So as you may suspect, uh, no, sorry. So if, for example, a manufacturer missed its deadline because, uh, for example, he was receiving his Notice of Compliance the very next day, he had to wait four months before being able to submit. So this encountered significant and unuseful delays, holding back, to, holding back access to drug for patients. In addition, we only had a couple of days between the moment of the submission and the moment that the professional opened the file to start their scientific evaluation. So because of this, we could only offer four weeks for external consultation. This means that patients, parents, caregivers, association, etc., only had four weeks to provide us with their comments. Namely because of these elements, we have made an important shift, which is transitioning toward operating in the continuous mode. So now there are no longer deadlines, so the manufacturer can submit whenever they want in a given year. In addition, they can submit prior or after the issuance of the notice of compliance. In some cases, we are even able to perform our whole evaluation and to issue our recommendation on the day that the drug receives its notice of compliance. We are really, really glad about this shift, and we trust that this increases the access for patients despite the period required for the negotiation between the PCPA and the manufacturer. So faster access was our leitmotiv for this important change, and I have to admit that we were glad because we really trust that it increases access, but we were also glad because shortly after the Quebec Life Science Strategy was released and they had a really persuasive target that they, they imposed us, which is we have to synchronize our recommendation with CADET. And without this shift in a continuous mode, we would never have been able to reach this target. We took advantage of this shift to introduce the letter of intent. This means that the manufacturer has to inform, us, to inform us two months in advance that they are going to submit an INES. With this information in hands, we are able to start earlier the external consultation and even to make it last almost twice longer. 
So instead of the usual four weeks, we now offer seven weeks. The longer that patients, relative caregivers association have to provide us with their comments, the, the more we receive, the better we understand the reality that patients and caregivers are living with, and the more adequately it can be taken into consideration when we are performing our evaluation and when the committee is deliberating for a recommendation. This external consultation mainly occurs through letters and through the questionnaire that can be found on our website, but in some cases it is through focus group or semi-directed interviews. In the last year, we've had two uh, semi-directed interviews, both with, um, with the, both for rare diseases. So a very limited number of competent professionals had the opportunity to discuss in person or in the, on the phone with patients and their parents. This, this opportunity allowed us to harvest really important information that could not be found anywhere else. Another important thing to mention about the patient perspective is its location in our notice to the minister. It used to be in criteria four out of five. And the way it works at Ines is that when the first criteria, the therapeutic value, is not satisfied, the evaluation stops there and the notice uh, to the minister is sent with just the information concerning the first criteria. So, even though the patient perspective was taken into consideration in our evaluation, it was not presented to the minister. Since we judge we were lacking transparency, we've made a change. So we've put it this, we have put this criteria, this uh, perspective in the first criteria. So now, no matter what the recommendation is, the, the patient perspective is presented in every notice to the minister. Okay, so I just, as I just mentioned, we can issue a negative recommendation because the therapeutic value is not satisfied. It can also be because of the five criteria as a whole, but most of the time the recommendations are favorable, either without or with conditions. We have three conditions that are not mutually exclusive. The first one is when the drug requires utilization specification. The second one is because of an economic matter. And finally, our last one, the monitoring, is when additional clinical data is required. Without this later condition, we would never have been able to issue a positive recommendation in some contexts. The reason is that as per clinical data submitted by the manufacturer, we judge that the drug shows a promise of value, but additional information is required so we can confirm that the drug really has a proven efficacy and it, that it has a, a safety secure profile. So in, in the meantime, before we are able to reassess the data, we judge that it is worth the shot to give access to patients so they can get the chance to see their disease slowen or their, their irre irreversible damage uh, prevented. So finally, where are you going tomorrow? In the short to medium term, we want to continue with our uh, focus group and maybe even increase the number. And we want to bring uh, some changes also regarding, okay, it's regarding uh, the, uh, the section intended to the, to the public. So briefly, it is a short section in our notice to the minister where we are presenting in a, in a popularized language what are the underlying reasons for our recommendation. But we need to improve the visibility because it may be hard to find on our website. We need to increase the number because it is actually just for oncology and rare diseases. And we, we also need to improve our language to make it more clear and more simple because we tend to use a scientific language. So we are working, working with an external consultant to help us with the language. Thank you.